What up, guys? CP the Toiletic. Woo! We got an exciting day here because we've got something very cool in here. Uh huh. Carrying case, charger. Just stick around to check it out. We also got the old uh, unit here. We're going to give a little comparison between these, but uh, this is going to be a good video because this is a great, great tool to have. Stick around if you want to find out what's in the box. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I have my compadre here, Miss Sunny. Sunny, what are you doing? I know you can't see her. Come here. Can you you want to get on camera? For, come over here. Come here, Miss Sunny. Come here, Miss Sunny. Owen. Miss Sunny is so excited to say hi to everyone. What are you doing? Sniff in there. Come here. Miss Sunny is so excited. Oh, you can't eat that. <laughs> she just wants to bite me all the time. I always like to share it with you guys. So, Miss Sunny, what are you doing? You want to share it? Come here. Come here. Oh, he was just a happy little puppy. I apologize, guys. New puppy. I got new, pu new puppy goofing. But anyways, let's get into the video here. Uh, let's talk about thermal imagers. I have a thermal imaging camera here from a company called Kawits. Kawits, Kawits, I've been using for a while now, and I appreciate their patience with me over the time. We've got the Viver thermal imager that I've been using, also very handy. And I like it, but I think this is a little nicer unit, to be honest with you. Uh, let me just throw open up. Oh, and it smells so good. I don't know what they put in the box, but it smells absolutely delicious in there. It, uh, You know, that's crazy. Uh, normally, you get that uh, stuff from overseas. It doesn't smell that good. All right, so a couple of uh, things to notate is this case. This comes with this case. This comes with a hard case. Um, and then we're going to just talk about some external differences right off the bat because that's the most notable thing. So bam, this is the KTI W01. As you see, it has a dust cap on it. This kind of reminds me of my uh, scopes. But there's a little bit of a size difference. The case is nice. Got a little storage pouch here. Has a little bit of nothing in it. I don't know what I did. I might have took the I might have took the cable out of here. To be honest with you, I might have took the charging cable out of there because that happens once in a while. Oh no, that comes in the box here. Once again, I open this box up. We have more compartments in here. Very nice packaging, which can be subjective. We always talk about that, you know, packaging costs you money. That packaging, yeah. So here's a charger in here. Uh, I haven't. Been, I've been charging this off a different charger, USB-C charger, with a plug, you know. Pretty standard operation stuff right there. I don't really need to talk to you guys about that stuff, you know. That's basic information, in my opinion. But once again, the box can still double as a nice storage case, too, uh, inside your hard case, if you're like me, where you like to keep that stuff together. Okay, so we're going to look at fire-up times. We're going to hold the buttons here. See which one fires up faster. The Viver, the Kiwits. For comparison. Sakes, just to say. Boom, the Viver did, but I might have pressed the button just a smidge sooner. But you can see the system is still initializing. And the Kiwits, once we flip this dust cap open, is already ready to fire. And the Viver is still hanging in there. Boom, now the Viver's live. So that is a huge difference in itself right there, which I thought was fantastic about this. So I do, I am going to, I'm not going to lie to you. This is one of my new favorite, uh, new favorite tools. You can see here, we've got some hot spots where my plug-in is on the back there. Uh, whoops, trying to get it in frame. The plug-in is on the back. We can see there and it circles all around, giving you cold spottage. Plus we have a cool, I have a, this shows your cool. I have my thermos right here and let's lighten it up for the folks. You can lighten it up pretty quick so you can get that, you know, distinction. Uh, let me get it in here. I'm trying to film this and see, this is, see behind here we have my canteen, but we can also get the temperature off that and that's, 
pretty accurate as we go down farther here. Where are we at? 70, 73 degrees. That's pretty, that's probably pretty accurate about the outside temperature of that. Inside temperature is going to be a little bit warmer, but we give that hot spot. I, can't, I really do like this one uh, for the menu. We've got photos, image connection, your co videos, color palette, immersity, those simple, simple things right there, but the e simple use of ease of buttons. The one downfall is this does not have a light on it, which to be honest with you, isn't that big of a deal, but we do have our trigger. You know, we can store the photo with a simple trigger press and, uh, or we can say no all on the push of the button. It also appears to have a slightly larger screen than my Viver, which is the same as the Top Don for any retrospects. And I've had a couple of people say that they, did, they don't last, but uh, that's working just fine. Never had an issue with it. We got our battery indicator up there and our temperature is displayed up there in the upper light left corner but i really do like the the quickness of how it the refresh rate of this is a little bit faster i noticed than the Viver. let me see if i can actually if you watch the lag when i'm moving this the refresh rate of the Viver is just a touch slower and this is a nice uh tool to be honest with you the light comes in handy every once in a while, I'm not going to lie to you. But the refresh rate is a little bit different. And shutdown's fine, but I kind of like this. And if you're really not familiar with this, this is pretty similar to the one Matco sells for around $1,100. Uh, so that is uh, also an interesting aspect of this. These buttons really aren't really useful on this screen. You have to use these on the menu. That's what those for. So very simple, easy use too as well. You know, and what these things have great uses for, as you can see back here, that is a AC outlet right there, right? And that is showing us temperature on an AC outlet of, you can change this to Celsius too, but of 80 degrees. So not very hot, but it still shows a much warmer spot. So if you were trying to diagnose electrical issues and you say, hey, look at this, we're getting some voltage out of this that's different in a hotspot and a wire, That's these things come in handy. Seat heaters, cooling vents, all sorts of great diagnostics. You can even check cylinder temperatures, head temperatures on cars. People overlook these things all the time and say, what are they good for? And as well as being a great price for this tool, I think this is one of the most affordable ones on the market. But like I said, I really do like the dust cap, but I'll tell you what, you're looking to save a few more pennies in the Viver that you're not going to be sh shut out of having a worse scan tool. Here is your charging port right here. You know, this basic information we don't really need to cover a lot, but as far as what a infrared thermometer is good for, this is absolutely a top-notch diagnostic scan that is very, very useful. I can tell you even the simplest of minds can run this and help them diagnose stuff. There has been multiple points in where I have showed up with this and said hey, they said they couldn't had, couldn't find a problem with an electrical. Well, if you're following wire and you come to a dead end where you see one side of the wire is cold and the other side of the wire is drawing current, that absolutely will help you out. Does it work every time? No, but cylinder temperatures, misfires, you know, you can see quickly if you're not getting any fuel to a, to a cylinder doing exhaust hem, which uh, I might show you a video of that too. But these are absolutely fantastic and well worth having into your arsenal and your toolbox. A great, fantastic tool. And I wanted to share this one with you because I've had a couple others that I haven't showed that didn't meet my specifications. The only two that have so far have been these two right here. And uh, you, know, you guys all know the snap-on ones are extremely overpriced. Uh, you can buy a lot of other ones that are ex extremely expensive. But for automotive use, I think if you're looking for different aspects maybe of something in a higher grade and you're needing to do something with longer range stuff, these are not it. But these are good short range infrared scanners that help you with diagnostics on vehicles. Absolutely fantastic. So anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. Remember to like, comment, share, subscribe. Ring that bell. Remember, keep your hands dirty and your money clean. Thanks for watching.